we tend to look through language and not realize how much power language has. Language is such a powerful medium of communication. We have the ability to build projects from scratch using the nuances of language. It's what drew me to natural language processing, NLP, in the first place. In this video, we will cover the length and breadth of language models. We will begin from basic language models that can be created with a few lines of Python code and move to the state-of-the-art language models that are trained using humongous data and are being currently used by the likes of Google, Amazon, and Facebook, among others. What is a language model in NLP? You shall know the nature of a word by the company it keeps. John Rupert Firth A language model learns to predict the probability of a sequence of words. But why do we need to learn the probability of words? Let's understand that with an example. I'm sure you have used Google Translate at some point. We all use it to translate one language to another for varying reasons. This is an example of a popular NLP application called Machine Translation. In Machine Translation, you take in a bunch of words from a language and convert these words into another language. Now, there can be many potential translations that a system might give you and you will want to compute the probability of each of these translations to understand which one is the most accurate. In the above example, we know that the probability of the first sentence will be more than the second, right? That's how we arrive at the right translation. This ability to model the rules of the language as a probability gives great power for NLP-related tasks. Language models are used in speech recognition, machine translation, part of speech tagging, parsing, optical character recognition, handwriting recognition, information retrieval, and many other daily tasks. Types of language models. There are primarily two types of language models. Statistical language models. These models use traditional statistical techniques like engrams, hidden Markov models, HMM, and certain linguistic rules to learn the probability distribution of words. Neural language models. These are new players in the NLP town and have surpassed the statistical language models in their effectiveness. They use different kinds of neural networks to model language. Now that you have a pretty good idea about language models, let's start building one. How do n-gram language models work? An n-gram language model predicts the probability of a given n-gram within any sequence of words in the language. If we have a good n-gram model, we can predict p. W, H, what is the probability of seeing the word W given a history of previous words H, where the history contains N1 words? We must estimate this probability to construct an n-gram model. We compute this probability in two steps. Apply the chain rule of probability. We then apply a very strong simplification assumption to allow us to compute P, W1, WS, in an easy manner. The chain rule of probability is... So what is the chain rule? It tells us how to compute the joint probability of a sequence by using the conditional probability of a word given previous words. But we do not have access to these conditional probabilities with complex conditions of up to n1 words. So how do we proceed? This is where we introduce a simplification assumption. We can assume for all conditions that here we approximate the history, the context of the word wk by looking only at the last word of the context. This assumption is called the Markov Assumption. Building a Basic Language Model Building a Basic Language Model Now that we understand what an engram is, let's build a basic language model using trigrams of the Reuters Corpus. Reuters Corpus is a collection of 10,788 news documents totaling 1.3 million words. We can build a language model in a few lines of code using the NLTK package. The code above is pretty straightforward. We first split our text into trigrams with the help of NLTK and then calculate the frequency in which each combination of the trigrams occurs in the dataset. We then use it to calculate probabilities of a word, given the previous two words. That's essentially what gives us our language model. Let's make simple predictions with this language model. We will start with two simple words, today the. We want our model to tell us what will be the next word. So we get predictions of all the possible words that can come next with their respective probabilities. 
Now, if we pick up the word price and again make a prediction for the words the end price. If we keep following this process iteratively, we will soon have a coherent sentence. Here is a script to play around with generating a random piece of text using our Ngram model. And here is some of the text generated by our model. Pretty impressive. Even though the sentences feel slightly off, maybe because the Reuters dataset is mostly news, they are very coherent given the fact that we just created a model and 17 lines of Python code and a really small dataset. Limitations of Ngram approach to language modeling. Ngram-based language models do have a few drawbacks. The higher the N, the better is the model usually. But this leads to lots of computation overhead that requires large computation power in terms of RAM. Engrams are a sparse representation of language. This is because we build the model based on the probability of words co-occurring. It will give zero probability to all the words that are not present in the training corpus. Building a neural language model. Deep learning waves have lapped at the shores of computational linguistics for several years now, but 2015 seems like the year when the full force of the tsunami hit the major natural language processing, NLP, conferences. Dr. Christopher D. Manning. Understanding the problem statement. Does the above text seem familiar? It's the U.S. Declaration of Independence. The dataset we will use is the text from this declaration. The problem statement is to train a language model on the given text and then generate text given an input text in such a way that it looks straight out of this document and is grammatically correct and legible to read. Import the libraries. Read the dataset. You can directly read the dataset as a string in Python. Preprocessing the text data. We perform basic text preprocessing since this data does not have much noise. We lowercase all the words to maintain uniformity and remove words with length less than 3. Once the preprocessing is complete, it is time to create training sequences for the model. Creating sequences. The way this problem is modeled is we take in 30 characters as context and ask the model to predict the next character. Now, 30 is a number which I got by trial and error and you can experiment with it too. You essentially need enough characters in the input sequence that your model is able to get the context. Let's see how our training sequences look like. Encoding sequences. Once the sequences are generated, the next step is to encode each character. This would give us a sequence of numbers. So now, we have sequences like this. Create training and validation set. Once we are ready with our sequences, we split the data into training and validation splits. This is because while training, I want to keep a track of how good my language model is working with unseen data.